Okay, in this video we're going to learn about functions. Let's go ahead and open up a new project here. There we go. So functions are uh, pretty much in any language and of course they do the same thing across languages. So uh, there's a couple ways to, to think about this and um, before we can get started what I want to do is I want to point out if you know what a function is and you just want to see the code for, for uh, C or C++, go to the website. We'll put a link on this and there's a code reference in there. So again, if you already know what it is, then uh, this can save you some time. Uh, for those of you that don't know what it is or just want a better understanding, I'm going to give you t two analogies. The first of it is think of it as a verb, you know, a noun verb. Verbs do something. And so a function is a piece of code that does something. And more importantly, um, what we're going to focus on is a function is, is something, it does something, a verb that does something again and again. So when you're building a piece of code again and again, and you want to reuse that, uh, then we're going to use a function. And I'm going to make this a little bit tedious uh, by design because coding can be tedious. And this is actually a perfect use for functions because we don't want to do something again and again. So I'm going to bring a couple buttons out here. And uh, I don't know, we'll just make several. And we're going to give it uh, several edit boxes and a label. I mean, you could, you know, if you want an analogy for building something, it could be a calculator. It could be virtually anything that you're going to build. Um, and without a function, what you would do is you would write the code uh, for each use. So let's get a label here and we'll go ahead and go in the code and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we just have three buttons, uh, three edit boxes, and then we have a label. So when we click on this, we'll go into the code. And uh, we've been working with functions a lot, just to, to point out. Um, but we're going to, again, we're going to make it easier and we're going to start delving, delving into what they look like. So the first thing we, we would do, let's say we're going to take a number. Um, and we're going to start with our button number one. So that means we're going to put something in label number one. So label. We're going to update the text field. And this is going to be our initial code. So let's say that we want to take a number and add five to that. So we're going to take the number from the edit box and again, add five to that. So to take the number from the edit box, we would do edit one. And then from there, we're going to get the text field, right? Now the problem is we're taking something from a text field. And if you remember from the other uh, videos and variables, uh, the, 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 normally it's a string. So we're going to go ahead and do a type conversion. We're going to take something from a string and we're going to convert it to an integer. So either five or 10 or whatever you type in this text box, it looks like a number, but the computer stores it as a string and it's just a, a different size format. And again, so we're going to do this type conversion. So to do that, we're going to say the text field, uh, we're going to convert it to an int, right? And not to give too much away, if I can get this back here, but this is actually a function. So again, we've been using functions all the time. And uh, in the code, the function are going to have these two parentheses. Uh, and they're going to be preceded by a function name. And sometimes they'll have some other fields. And again, we'll get into these other fields as we go. So right now we have a real quick and simple, um, we're going to take some text from the text box, we're going to give it to a function. Uh, it's going to spit out a number, and then we're going to add a number to that and we're going to add it to our label. So let's go ahead and run this. See if everything compiles for us. So now if we put a number in here, let's just make it eight. Click our button and we, we can see that it added eight. It got eight, converted it to an actual number that the computer knows. Um, it added five to that and then it updated our, our label. So now in this case, we, we have the one button but, uh, you know, uh, for a calculator, we, we may have all kinds of buttons and different fields. And let's look at how we would do that without a function. Again, to point out how tedious this can be. So let's go back to the design. We'll click on button two. 
And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use, actually, let's go ahead and not make it too tedious. Let's update this. So we're going to take this piece of code, copy it, and paste it. Okay, so now we're not taking it from label. Uh, yeah, we are going to update label one, but we're going to take it from edit field two. All right, and now we can do the same thing. And you can already see that it's tedious, like I pointed out, and we're, we're coming up with shortcuts. Unfortunately, it's a copy and paste, right? So we've made it a little bit faster by copying and pasting, uh, but it's not as fast as it could be. So we'll go ahead and run this and test it out. So let's see, we have five. Yep, that works. Two, and that works. Okay, now, again, depending on your program and what you're doing, your programs do something uh, that happens over and over really fast, and that's what they're good at. So if we had 10 buttons and 500 fields over here, uh, again, this would be very, very tedious just to, to, first of all, to copy and paste the code. It's not efficient. More importantly, let's say we had 1,000 of these or 10,000 of these, right, if we're doing a stock trading program or something else, and then we had a change. So suddenly somebody comes to us and says, you know what, that's not supposed to be a five, it's supposed to be a seven. So we'd have to go through each line of code where we've done this and update that. And again, if it's 10,000 fields, that's a lot of time and it's not time well spent. So what we wanna do is we're gonna combine all of this code into one spot, right? So that if there's a change or if we find a bug, we can just change the code in one spot. And that's really the key behind a function. Again, a function is a verb, it does something. We're gonna abstract it, we're gonna put it in one place. And then anybody who, who, who does that, right, um, can, can leverage this, this function. And we're gonna give it a name. So for in our example, uh, we're gonna do, let's call it save time. And I'm gonna try to walk you through this. And um, we'll come back and we're going to add some fields to it. In a function in C, C++, we're going to have an open bracket and a closed bracket. So we have a function name, save time, right, which is very much like this to int, right, take a string and convert it to an in integer. We have the two parentheses, right, so here are our two parentheses up here. And then we have two brackets, and the brackets, in between these brackets are where we're going to put our, our code, uh, much like these functions down here. These are a little bit more uh, in-depth with classes, but again, we'll come back to that. So now we're going to put some code in here, and this could be just any code. In our case, we want to do a simple calculation, and actually, uh, we want to do a couple other things. So maybe, uh, you know, our product manager... Um, whoever is designing the code said so this one should be a seven, this one should be an eight, and this one should be a nine. And again, these can change all the time, right? So now we don't know what this number is. So for an R function, what we're going to do is we're going to say take in a number, and and once you have that number, we're going to store it in a variable. And then we're going to do something with it, and then we're going to give you a number back. So really, give me something as the function, the verb, I'm going to do something with it, and then I'll give you a response. So to put a number, to send something in the function, uh, this, these, are all, these uh, parameters up here with these uh, parentheses, this is where all the inbound stuff goes, right? So let's say we're going to take in a number, because we've already converted this to a number, and we're just going to call it x. And now we can build out our function here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, return, right? We really haven't done anything yet, but we're going to do something. And when we do that, uh, we want to return what we've done uh, to whoever called it, right? So let's say this is x plus um, 5, just for now. Okay. So now we have a function, we've passed in a parameter. Again, this is where all the inbound stuff goes. This is our outbound stuff right now, which is just X. And we're gonna do one more thing. Um, in the function, right, if we, if we weren't going to return anything, 
Let's make this clear here. If we weren't going to return anything, we would call this void. And what we're saying is that it's not going to return anything. We're, we're, we're avoiding anything that it might return. Uh, if we were going to return uh, an integer, then we simply type in int. And so when something calls the function, it knows to set aside space for stuff it's going to get back. So that's all it is. And there's only going to be one of these. It could be void, it could be int, it could be string, it could be double, all these other things that we've already studied. Now, again, uh, if it was void, we, would leave, we wouldn't return anything. Since we have an integer, we're going to return an integer. So here's this. Now we've defined a function. Let's do this. Oh, we got to give it the, just like any other line of code. We don't do anything during the definition up here. But when we're actually writing code, which is in the parentheses, uh, we need our semicolon. So when we do this, we have our standard uh, boxes here. And although we have the function defined, uh, it's not called anywhere. Nobody's using the function, right? So let's go ahead and put in a spot where we can actually use the function. Now to use the function, like our two int, right, uh, we're going to call save time. That's what we're trying to do in our code here. We're going to give it the open and ending uh, parenthesis. And what we can do is where we were executing this before, this actually takes the number uh, and converts it to an integer. That's what this line of code right here does. It takes the number and converts it to an integer, right? So it gives us an integer. And our function expects an integer. So I can really kind of collapse this. Since we know this code gives us an integer, and our function wants an integer, uh, we can actually execute this code within the function name. So what it's going to do is it's going to take uh, the number from the box and add a 3. Let's say it's 8. It's going to give an 8 to our function same, save time. Now our function save time up here is going to take in an 8. It's going to add 5 to it, and it's going to return it. And then our return number will be right here. It's actually a, 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 turns into a, the, it, it just gives a number to the next operation here. And then we'll have um, 8 plus 9. Okay. So let's run this. Oops, and I have an, oops, and I have an error. Let's see. Let's do text a 3 to integer. Let's just do this. Undefined function save time. So let's see if I have the, ah, so C's kind of picky. Capital letter, there we go. Try this again. Okay. So I think we were talking about 8 before. We have 13. And we could go back and do this before I started troubleshooting it. Call this 9. My mouse would work. Okay, there we go. So now it's working. Our, our first function is working. Now again, what we could do is if we wanted to save time, is uh let's copy and paste this so now rather than doing my calculation again and again right but writing code for it uh, a thousand times it just doesn't make sense we have one function and then what we're going to do is we're going to call that function anytime we need to do that calculation right so we hit run here just check out all of these let's type in five it'll give us uh, what I do wrong? Oh, so when I copied and pasted, I forgot to change these, and there was no number in the edit box three. Okay, one more time. Lots of debugging here. Five. Let's change this so we can make sure it's different. Yep. Okay, so all this seemed to work, and now that our code calls these functions, the good thing is if somebody tells us to change this, we can make one change 
And that change is going to work across all three of these boxes. So we just saved a lot of time. So functions are really handy. Uh, you're going to use them a lot. People make other functions and you can download them open source code. So I don't know if you needed a, a function for a leap year or for a calendar or for some type of currency conversion. No need to recreate the wheel. All these are out there and you can download them and use them. And we're, we'll get into classes later on. But again, class is an actual code. You can import those and use it. So I hope this has been a good explanation for you. I really try to focus on how it can save you time, why to use it rather than what it looks like, because I think if you understand the concept, uh, then it'll, it just makes it easier to learn. And all the, the functions are in all languages. They're just little nuances with them. But again, I think if you understand the concept, it'll help you go a long way. So take care, and we'll see you in the, the next video.